Welcome back. All right, so we're out here tonight yet again doing some more to this beauty. So, as you know, this thing has been in multiple times. The owner is an absolutely incredible guy and uh, he just loves his truck. So he'll buy parts or we'll help him get parts or whatever and he always brings them down to get them installed. So what we have tonight is a intake tubing kit or a piping kit. So we're gonna put that on. He's already got his SMB filter and we are going to be swapping out these absolutely beautiful lights for a set of Morimoto's. So <clears throat> if you know anything about these Morimoto lights, they are awesome. They have that little like amber running light around the outside and uh, yeah, he wants to swap these guys out. So we are going to start with the tubing kit or the piping kit and we're gonna hopefully wrap that up super, super quickly. So we got lots of time to do the lights because to do the lights, we got to pull the grill and everything else. And I want to make sure that we take some time so nothing gets damaged. So all that aside, let's roll. You know what we're doing. You know what we're on. You saw the thumbnail. You already knew before you clicked. Let's do it, yo. Pew. Round one, like I said, let's go over what we got and where they got to go. Okay, so this right here, from the clamps over, this is the hot side um, sinister diesel tubing kit. So this is gonna take care of everything from the turbo up to the intercooler. Next here, we have a coolant filter. So that's everything from these little guys over to here and up to the filter. So that's gonna um, filter all of his coolant. And then on this side, we have the cold air or the cold side tubing kit. So you have the two clamps that little silicone coupler and this piece of pipe. So we have the hot side, which this is the cold side here. That's the cold side. The hot side comes around the other way underneath. So we'll get to that. What am I talking about? Ay, ay, ay. It's late. This side's the hot side. This side here is the cold side. And that's what we're gonna be replacing. So we're gonna have nice guy here, nice guy here, and the coolant filter goes back on the side. Now that we have all that figured out and the proper orientation of where they're trying to go, let's start bolting them on. But like I said, we're gonna start pulling off this hot side pipe. So this takes the air from the turbo way down there in the engine valley, brings it all the way through here. And right here in the bottom of the camera, you can see this little silver, this little silver square here. That right there is your intercooler, right there that I'm pointing at. So what we wanna do is get rid of this one first. So you have a clamp down here, we have another clamp here, we have another clamp here, and then there's a little like funky spring clip down there on the turbo. So all I'm gonna do is undo the furthest clamp this way, and then we're gonna take two screwdrivers and that uh, clamp on the turbo kinda of sits like this. We're gonna pop it open, and we'll be able to slide that pipe right off and right out of there. Okay, so that's how easy that was. Like you saw, I just put a screwdriver up there, kind of twisted it, and then it popped right out. This side undo the one clamp here. Now, this side here where it goes out of or into the intercooler, that tube's gonna kind of go around this and you put a clamp on it here. You wanna make sure that you wipe all this down. I'm gonna use some brake cleaners, just get rid of, see that little, that oil there on my finger? Um, I wanna get rid of all that so that the new boot has a good chance to go on and stay on when we get it there. So let's get that thing cleaned up and we'll throw the new pipe on. All right, so now that we took some time and cleaned up the inlet there and the one on the turbo, we have the new pipe here that is going to go on the turbo. You know that this is the turbo side because it has this funky clamp. So as you can see in here, you have one point there, one point right here and one point above my thumb. That's what we use the screwdriver to get underneath right here and kind of pull up. And as you do that, you can see that we just pull it open like this and those little clips are all that hold it to the turbo. Now, inside here, you have two little O-rings, one, two right there under my finger. And you wanna make sure that those are fully seated into this pipe. And what I did was put a little bit of white lithium grease. You can use anything that, you know, um, is more like a lubricant. What I wanna do is be able to ease these O-rings over top that turbo outlet. 
so that we don't rip an o-ring and or twist it so now what's going to happen is obviously you got the cool dog on here we're going to make sure that that points up and then we're going to very quietly slide this over because what you want to do is hear those three little prongs go clip when they snap onto the turbo so quiet down everybody let's get this thing in There it is. So hopefully you were able to hear it. I definitely did. So we know that we are good. So now that that's on there, we are going to put one of our silicone couplers. Excuse me. We're going to put one of our silicone couplers here on there. And then we have this really nice, again, sinister aluminum pipe. And that one's going to go from the intercooler down here and point all the way up toward the pipe that we just put on. So Let's go ahead, we'll throw a little bit of lithium grease on those two couplers so they're just easier to get over top of the bead roll right here. And we'll throw some clamps on it and we'll get it on. So that wasn't too, too bad. So we got our clamps tightened down here on the intercooler. We have the clamps tightened up there that go toward the turbo. And that tube is on there and done. So next thing we wanna do is jump over to this front one right here, this big rubber guy. And that's the cold side. So that is the large blue pipe there, the two clamps and the one coupler. So what we're gonna do is same thing. Go to this clamp right here. We're gonna pull that guy off. We're gonna reach all the way down there to the bottom where the other clamp is, it goes in the bottom of that intercooler. We're gonna pull that one off. We'll get this old stuff out of the way. Now that we have the stock tube off, there's a little sensor right there, you see it? Right in the middle. So what we need to do is take that out of this old pipe, we need to put it in the new pipe. The way you take it out of the old pipe is place your pipe down on a workbench, grab a pair of pliers, and you just lightly twist like this, and it will pop itself right out. If I had two hands. So look at that, there it is. All right, now what we're gonna do is walk over here to the new pipe, and as you can see, it's got a, uh, let's see if you can see it there. It's got a little arrow and that little lock tang. So what we're gonna do is take this, drop it in here. It's going to press down and we're just gonna twist it lightly. And there you go. It's in there, it's clipped. So now what we're ready to do, I already went ahead and installed that same little funky ring this one has a couple more points to it but that's what's going to clip on um, at the top of the throttle body we're going to put that one wiring harness in there and then we have this little elbow that is going to go onto the intercooler and point up just like this and we're going to have a clamp at the bottom and a clamp right there onto this tube let's get her done All right. So, that took a lot longer than it ever should have. Um, this cold side pipe is an absolute nightmare to get onto the throttle body and down onto there. I can't tell you how long I spent fighting with it because it's absurd. Now, going to do the coolant filter. Of course, I don't know what's wrong with me, but you have to take off the hot side pipe, which is the first one that we did. So, yeah, if you're gonna do the coolant filter, do it before you do the hot side pipe now I have to undo everything that I did do which does nothing more than 
eat up my time and it's obviously for free because I did it incorrectly so yeah probably not gonna film a whole ton about this coolant filter so what you're supposed to do is if I flip this you see those three screws you put the three screws into this housing that bolts it onto the bracket the bracket here has one hole in the back that's going to go onto a stud on the firewall you have to put on this shut off and this shut off so i did that and then on this one you run it all the way down the one on the t this goes into right here Let's see if i can get it there we go so there's a little line that goes into the coolant bottle that's where the t is going to go and this one here is going to go down to a sensor which is right behind the hot pipe so right now there's a sensor basically where this bolt is it pokes straight up out of the intake manifold and we want to rotate it 90 degrees and put it in here and then that hose that I just pointed to goes down onto this fitting here um, so it's going to read the pressure here or the temperature I should say here and then it's gonna bypass that guy go up through this it's gonna go through this hose here up into here down through the filter back up and then back around here into the T which goes into the coolant bottle so that's kind of how this thing works I understand how it works but this little badger right here is the reason that oh, there goes my little copper washer um, the hot side pipe can't be in place so to start all of this, you have to drain the coolant. So I'm gonna crawl underneath right now, drain a bunch of coolant out of the radiator so that I can get that sensor out and it doesn't pour coolant all over then. And then I'm gonna turn around and I'll pull that sensor. All it is is a, I'll show you here real quick. Uh, where's my light? Of course, gone forever. Anyways straight straight down there you can see right here above my finger there's that little sensor that sensor is the one we want to pull out so I'm just going to unclip the wire on it which you can see right here where my finger is I'm going to unclip that wire once we get the wire off it I'm just going to thread it out so once I get that little adapter thing back on there and I stop cursing I'll bring the camera back and I'll hopefully be in a much better mood and then, uh, yeah, we'll wrap up this install. Welcome back, friends. Okay, so, like I mentioned, they tell you that you need to, grab the light, pull the hot side hose, or tube. So if we look right down there, you can see that little blue hose. That little blue hose is on the adapter if I can try to get the light there's my little banjo bolt you can see there the large silver nut the blue housing there and then the hose wraps underneath and around up to the coolant filter which like I mentioned there's a little stud right there you can see in the back that's already in the firewall you pull that out with a 13 mil you put the bracket on there this hose here comes all the way around the outside you tee it in right here so you cut half an inch out of this hose one clamp two clamps so what's happening is the coolant is getting its temp sensor reading down there on that blue thing it comes up this way gets filtered goes out of the filter around here and then over into the overflow so what you do do what you're supposed to do i did not have to take that hot side off so I am very pleased because it is super 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 late and I still have the headlights to do so it's gonna be a ridiculously late night but what I did do was I grabbed a an old gas can now this thing has been cleaned out and done it was perfectly dry there was nothing in it I dropped a funnel right here with uh, two zip ties and all I did was zip tie it so that it stayed up like this. It didn't fall over. And then I opened the pet cock on the rad, let it drain into the gas can. By doing that, now I have a pourable container 
that I just took this, dropped it in the top of the coolant jug right here, and I was able to pour out of the gas can back into that, back into the truck. So we didn't lose any coolant other than, I don't know, 10 drips right there on the floor. And then I was able to put all the coolant right back in and we're a little bit lower in the truck now because we filled up that filter. But starting the truck, I just turned it off. Um, we're still at the max level in the bottle. So I would say that is a success. You do not have to pull off that hot side tube. I don't know why they tell you to. I just did it, it wasn't that bad. So I feel a lot better about putting that on first. I figured you could have got to it, but whatever. In case you're wondering, in case you're doing it yourself, that is what you need to do. So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, close this video out so anybody who is buying these parts can put them on their truck and um, they don't have to watch all the headlights and everything. If you want to watch the headlights, watch the next video. See how I kind of did that? You got to buy one, get one free. We'll do it that way. So here's your buy one, get one free video. Come back, watch the next one for the headlight install. All right. I'd like to say I'm going in for the night, but that would definitely be a lie. So yeah, do stuff. Come back, watch the headlight install because I don't know, it'll be kind of fun. We'll see what kind of other stuff I mess up. Just kidding. Anyways, we're taking these headlights out. These are the uh, LEDs. We're putting in the Morimoto's and um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video, sucker. Bye-bye.